This happened in 1914 when an eight-year-old boy was playing in a village in Japan. He saw a four-wheel drive car. This was a Ford Model T, which surprised the boy. This was the day when the eight-year-old boy first became attached to cars and mechanical parts. The name of the boy was Soichiro Honda. Who knew that we would see this name on the car in the future? Welcome back to World Explorer's Corner Videos. In 1906, Soichiro Honda was born in a small village near Mount Fuji in Japan. His father was an ironworker and also worked part-time as a cycle repairman. Five of Honda's siblings had died due to various diseases. So, his parents had high hopes for their son. But he had no interest in studies. However, Honda was more interested in cycle repair with his father. When he turned 16, he saw a job ad in a newspaper. Eight Tokyo-based auto service station technicians were needed. Honda wrote a letter to the company for a job and was lucky to receive a positive reply. This was the time when Honda left his home and school and went to Tokyo. Honda's dream broke when he reached Tokyo. The owner of the company started cleaning and even had him babysitting. What could Honda have done? On one hand, he had left his home and parents, and on the other hand, he was doing odd jobs. He was ashamed to go back to his village because he couldn't face his parents. This was the reason why he was forced to do odd jobs there for the next few months. After a few months, the owner of Art Shokai started giving workshop work to Honda. Honda was interested in this work from the beginning, so he could understand things easily. In a few months, he had learned a lot about all kinds of cars and their parts. During this time, Art Shokai also made two sports cars. The first car was Art Daimler, and the second was Curtis. These two cars were made using used engines. They also won the first position in the Japanese Motor Car Championship in 1924. Honda was still a good mechanic, but in this race, he sat with the driver as an engineer. This was the event after which Soichiro Honda made motorsports his religion. For the next few years, he continued to work in the art department and continued to increase his experience. In 1928, at the age of 22, his owner decided to open another branch. This branch was to be in Hamamatsu City which was entrusted to Honda as a responsibility. Honda started this new branch with just one worker, and in just two years, it had grown to 30 workers. He was now a brilliant mechanic and a racing driver. He took advantage of his expertise and designed a sports car for his owner. This car could reach a speed of 120 kilometers per hour, breaking all previous records. This record remained the highest in Japan for the next 20 years. The importance of Honda had increased in the heart of Art Shokai's owner. He wanted to open his own workshop, but perhaps fate did not allow it. In 1936, Honda had a terrible accident during racing. In this accident, his life was saved, but his left arm was fractured, his shoulder was dislocated, and he had many wounds on his face. He could see his life ending here. He could neither work as a mechanic nor take part in racing. After many months, when he recovered, he requested the owner of Art Shokai that he could not work as a mechanic anymore. In fact, he suggested that he should start a separate company to make spare parts. The stakeholders of Art Shokai rejected Honda's idea. They were already making profits and no one wanted to take a new risk. Based on this, Honda decided to open a parts manufacturing company on his own. In 1936, at the age of 30, he founded Tokai Seiki Heavy Industry with the help of his friend. He made his friend, Soichiro Kato, the president. He had already founded a company, but Honda had no investment to run it. He worked all day for Art Shokai. While at night, he tried to make an engine piston for his new company. For the next few months, he continued this routine, but he couldn't succeed. On the contrary, he had become weak due to continuous strain. One failure after another blocked his path. He then enrolled in a university to earn a degree in metallurgy. 
After three years of continuous hard work, in 1939, he finally succeeded in making a piston. He quit his job and started manufacturing pistons. However, he didn't know that there were still many flaws in his pistons. He offered his pistons to Toyota, but Toyota rejected 47 out of 50 designs. This news hit Honda like lightning because he had no way back. He started traveling all over Japan to understand the requirements of different companies. He visited different factories and met with car manufacturers. For the next few years, he tried to understand the market. After that, Honda once again attempted to make pistons. This time, all the quality control checks of the companies passed. He started receiving orders, and once again, he saw his dream come true. His company hired 2,000 workers to fulfill the orders. Who knew that this happiness of Honda would only last for a few months? In 1941, Japan entered World War II. The government took control of many Japanese companies, including one owned by Soichiro Honda. Honda was demoted and made the senior managing director of the company. Things got worse when the company's workers were conscripted into the military. The next three years passed in extremely challenging circumstances. But in 1944, an incident occurred that completely shattered Honda's hopes. During an air raid, a missile struck Honda's factory. The entire country was in dire straits. Japan was losing the war. Then in 1945, two nuclear attacks brought Japan to its knees. After this incident, Japan surrendered to the Americans. The war was over, but Honda had lost everything. He sold his remaining assets to Toyota for 450,000 yen. Once again, he became unemployed. This wasn't just the case for Honda. The whole of Japan was facing a severe crisis. The economy was collapsing. Shortages of food, water, and rapid inflation burdened everyone. Public transportation became scarce because Japan was running out of petrol. Around the same time, Honda acquired a small engine from the Japanese Imperial Army, which was originally used for a wireless radio. He got an idea from his habit of tinkering. He thought of installing this engine on a bicycle to address his transportation problem. This would make transportation easier and more affordable. When people saw this engine mounted on a bicycle, they liked the idea. Honda managed to acquire a few used engines, but the demand was so high that he designed his own engine. It was the first time in history that a machine bore the Honda logo. Honda didn't have enough money to mass-produce these bicycles, so he wrote an open letter to 18,000 shopkeepers. People trusted Honda so much that 3,000 shopkeepers replied positively and paid in advance. Over the next three years, Honda developed a motorcycle that met market requirements. It was launched under the name of Super Cub, and it became an instant hit in the market. This model was so successful that in 1958, it outsold American brands like Triumph and Harley-Davidson. Honda had a strong passion for racing. So he decided to create a sports bike. He attended various motorcycle races and took notes on the features of winning bikes. In those days, such sporting competitions were a marketing tool for manufacturing companies. In just a few years, Honda launched its first sports bike, which claimed the top position in the 1962 International Racing Competition. This race catapulted Honda's name to global recognition. By the 1960s, Honda had become the world's largest motorcycle manufacturing company, and by 1968, it had sold 100 million units. After 62 years of life, he had finally succeeded, but the dream he had nurtured since childhood had not yet been fulfilled. Honda now aspired to enter the car manufacturing industry. Many people advised against it, but he didn't listen to anyone. At that time, Companies like Toyota and Nissan had already established themselves in Japan. It was a challenging task to carve out a new niche in the market. Honda introduced its first pickup truck, the T360, which unfortunately failed. Following that, the sports car S500 was launched, 
but only 1,300 units were sold. After years of hard work and numerous rejected designs, Honda Civic was finally introduced in 1972. This is the car whose new models are still renowned worldwide. In the 1980s, Honda Motors became the third largest manufacturing company in Japan. Within a decade, it became the third largest in the world. Today, the name Honda is synonymous with cars, motorcycles, boat engines, plane engines, and dozens of power tools. The year following the launch of the Honda Civic, Soichiro Honda retired from the company in 1973. On August 5, 1991, his life's journey came to an end. I hope you liked and will share this video from World Explorer's Corner. Thank you very much for your kind comments. See you in the next amazing video.